it's going to be a boom because that that crazy looking vehicle has already shown its popularity on pre-orders two years why? ago. Why? Why? I want one. I think they're nuts. And I think it would be a lot of fun to drive a tank because that, that's what it is. But now a tank where you don't have to feel guilty about it. It's an EV. Mm. But it's got a lot of room. It's a very interesting vehicle. It's got a really ugly look. Ugly is interesting. It's a very interesting vehicle. It's got a really ugly look. Ugly is interesting. And you know, to be honest with you, I've got investments in providers that are providing technology for that truck. And we know the demand is huge. That is what O'Share's investment chairman Kevin O'Leary says about the Tesla Cybertruck. A lot of Tesla enthusiasts, as well as experts and analysts, have given their two cents about Tesla's much-talked-about upcoming release of the Tesla Cybertruck. And O'Leary had something to say about it, too. Although it looked ugly to him, he can't deny that investors' portfolios will become pretty, so to speak, because of it. It's going to be a boom because that crazy-looking vehicle has already shown its popularity on pre-orders two years, O'Leary told Yahoo Finance Live. Even before its mass production, Tesla CEO Elon Musk claimed that orders crossed 250,000 in the first week of availability. Media reports estimate the total number of reservations is north of 1.5 million for the model. The number of orders received may translate into added margin for the auto manufacturer, at least that's how O'Leary sees it. The one thing I really like about the story that I learned yesterday on the whole Elon thing, the margins on this truck could be really high, O'Leary said. I mean, this is going to be because they've had so much efficiency in manufacturing costs since they announced the truck, they're probably picking up, you know, 10 to 12 percent more margin on that thing. It is no secret that Kevin O'Leary thinks highly of Tesla and its CEO Elon Musk. Even last year, when a lot of people dropped Tesla like a hot potato because of Musk's messy Twitter acquisition, he predicted Musk's $44 billion offer to acquire Twitter will go through, even before the sale was finalized, and that it'll end up going in Musk's favor. I happen to have watched forever and I think this guy is a Teflon man, O'Leary said and he can obviously multitask. I bet on him in this deal. By the time all this stuff is over, I think he's going to have a good outcome. O'Leary shared how he thought Musk is overpaying by 40% in the deal, but added that the inflated number might be worth it in the long run. By owning Twitter, Musk could use his influence and popularity on the platform to financially benefit his other companies, like Tesla and SpaceX. Tesla is the only car company on Earth that's paying nothing on advertising. O'Leary said. He advertised it on the back of Twitter and other social media platforms. Very few people get to own their own unregulated network. He did, however, take a shot at Musk a few months ago about the latter's controversial assertion that working from home is immoral. O'Leary, who oversees a vast business empire consisting of 54 companies, has expressed his support for remote work and rejects any notion of immorality associated with it. At the time, Musk launched a scathing critique of remote workers, questioning its ethical implications. He argued that while some individuals enjoy the luxury of working from home, essential workers like delivery drivers and factory employees do not have the same privilege. O'Leary countered Musk's notion that remote work is a moral issue. In an interview with CNBC, he bluntly stated, no, when asked whether working from home is unethical. O'Leary's stance on this matter aligns with the preferences of a significant portion of the American workforce. A recent study by McKinsey & Co. revealed that 87% of employees in the United States would opt for flexible work arrangements if given the opportunity. Speaking with CNN, O'Leary acknowledged the unique circumstances of Musk's businesses, such as Tesla and SpaceX, which heavily rely on collaboration among engineers. He emphasized that this should not overshadow the success and viability of remote work in other sectors of the economy. Many industries have already embraced hybrid working models, and O'Leary argued that the pandemic has demonstrated the effectiveness of remote project management. With his extensive business portfolio spanning various states and sectors, O'Leary revealed that 40% of his companies have permanently transitioned to remote work. He highlighted the financial benefits, noting that post-pandemic, these businesses are projected to generate a 20% increase in free cash flow. O'Leary sees this as evidence that remote work is not only effective but also cost-efficient, particularly in terms of reducing real estate expenses. 
44% of our employees across our venture portfolio work remotely, and they ain't coming into the office, period," O'Leary said in a CNN interview in March. Still, this disagreement in belief didn't stop O'Leary from being optimistic about Tesla and its stock. In fact, he has been a fan even before the stock soared to the highest it has ever been in 2020. It was in 2019 when O'Leary first invested in Tesla. At the time, his son Trevor, a then intern at the company, convinced him that it wasn't a car company he was investing in, but a data technology company instead. He believes that companies that have pricing power and have positive business models and less debt on their balance sheet perform extremely well, because they can pass on their costs to investors and to clients that are buying their services and goods. Because of this, he personally prefers to have those than the bonds in the same company. He explained, because I know with a 100% outcome when I'm going to get paid back and when I have a long duration bond, and inflation is 6% and I'm paying 3.2%, which is sort of the average of corporate paper right now, that's a really bad place to put capital to work, so I'd much rather go in equities. That said, the famous investor said that the best time to invest is when everybody's going the other way, and this was the reason why he invested in Tesla as early as 2019. Tech has been cut in half, and yet the growth rates of the companies have not slowed at all," O'Leary said. According to him, there's no evidence that growth rates have slowed in mega-cap internet giants. I look at growth, I look at free cash flow, I look at the balance sheet, I don't listen to people talking, I look at cash flow, that's what matters. This is probably why O'Leary is confident with his investments. When asked about what makes Tesla in a better position to capitalize on current trends, O'Leary said that in each quarter there's always the speculation by the market that competition is going to erode margins, competition is going to erode share, competition is going to slow growth, and yet that has not happened. According to him, there is no company yet that's transitioned to the effectiveness and efficiency and productivity that Tesla has around the drivetrain, the engine, chipsets, and batteries. So there's a moat around Tesla because it was the first mover, but they've maintained their share through innovation," O'Leary said. Everybody criticized this guy for a million different reasons, but at the end of the day, when you ask somebody if you want to buy an EV, what do they want? They want a Tesla. So GM hasn't come with anything anybody wants, Porsche hasn't done anything yet. I'm not saying they won't, but it hasn't happened yet. The O'Leary Ventures chairman further shared that while these legendary automakers are making the transition and catching up to Tesla as fast as they can, Tesla has gained more share and reduced the price. They're getting more aggressive, they're bringing the truck," said O'Leary. I don't see a bad story here, and it's reflected in the stock, although it's a volatile stock, but if he's saying there's headwinds economically globally, that's the same environment for every company whether they're in the EV market or not. O'Leary also pointed to one thing that sets Tesla apart from said legendary automakers. What they've got that no one else has is a 100% focus on EV. They're not dealing with legacy engines of any kind, and so you have a much more efficient use and much more productive company. And as much as he doesn't like how the Tesla Cybertruck looks, he is confident about its possible gains. And surprisingly, he wants to own one too. I want one, he added. I think they're nuts, and I think it would be a lot of fun to drive a tank. It's got a really ugly look, ugly is interesting. Tasha Keeney, Director of Investment Analysis and Institutional Strategies at ARK Invest, said the vehicle is the most misunderstood vehicle release that Tesla has had. This is really a genius design, it's much more cost effective, it's unlike any other car that we've ever seen out there, and from an aesthetic basis, Keeney told Yahoo Finance Live. But really, because they're, you know, using just one piece of material, they're not using paint, it's going to be a lot more cost effective and easier to produce for them. Because we know that the paint shop is, you know, somewhat of a choke point for throughput in an automotive factory, Keeney added. Make sure to subscribe for more.